have the opportunity to bring you the message as well. And the hurried AV guy forgot to put the title on for online, but that's, but that's okay. I can always go back and fix that. But I, I titled this, I bounced around through with this for a couple of times, um, studying over this. I was glad I had the opportunity to have some time to study this, this topic. And the title I have is The Greatest is Love. The Greatest is Love. So let's start off. As you know, I do math, but I also like to define words when I do this. So let's define the word love. As a noun, the word love is a feeling of deep affection, passion, or a strong liking for a person or a thing. As a verb, is to show or to have deep attraction, affection, or an emotional attachment to a person, people, or things. The word love has become a shortcut of how a person feels about the subject at hand. Uh, let me give you some examples. Uh, oh, I, I just love the new car you bought. How, how do you like it? Or I love those jeans, how they look on you. And hey, how was the movie that you went to last night? And the next person goes, oh, I loved it. But they never really describe it. Um, I could not live without my phone. I, I love it. I mean, just, it's just the description portion of it. And it just, moving on. <clears throat> <laughs> the word love has become minimized to just a word that sums up our emotional attachments and our mindless expression towards objects or things. Um, not to be harsh, but it's almost kind of, it feels like it, it could be a lazy way out of things to me. And I will admit, I was one of those people, and then I, the, the light was shined on that, and I try not to do that anymore. There are things I love, like my children, my family. There's, that's a different thing, which we'll get into. But there are ways that the word love is to be used, and it's a correct manner and a meaningful manner. So for example, there is the love for brothers and sisters in Christ. This love is in the Greek word philia. Uh, this is how, as Christians, relate and express our feelings for each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. This kind of love needs to grow daily in our lives and on our relationships with our brothers and sisters. Um, it's something that can be practiced and perfected daily. Um, one of my jobs is to train people to learn how to drive large commercial vehicles or 18 wheelers. And one of the first things that I tell them when they come into my department to learn from me is, you have the opportunity to learn something new every single day. You can do the same job over and over and over again, but something different is gonna happen on that job and it is going to allow you to learn from that to make you better for the next day. Uh, the best example I give to them is how they back a trailer to a door. I, you, I could give you the same trailer 100 times to back to a door, you're gonna back to that door 100 different times. The positioning's gonna be different, the weight of the trailer might make a difference, Rain can make a difference. All sorts of things can make a difference on how you approach it. And with love, it's the same way. You have an opportunity to learn from it and build on it and perfect it daily, which is a great thing. Um, Pastor Michelle even mentioned it on Sunday evening um, that we should be growing in our love walk. I think she mentioned that, uh, and, and I believe this too, is when we're done here, the love, the love walk doesn't end. So, you know, when we get to heaven, we can't be like, oh, there's Jim. <laughs> you know, I, I, I loved him just enough on earth, but uh, oh, he's coming by. I can't miss him. <laughs> Hopefully I get some height there, too, when we go. But <laughs> nothing, nothing but love, sir. But, uh, no, we're, we're going to have to continue this moving forward through this life and our eternal lives. So it's best that we just keep working on it. And what I was really excited about is as I was studying this and 
picking this stuff up, I knew I was on the right track because Pastor, Pastor Michelle, uh, Dr. Pat Harrison, when she was in Little Rock, they were all going over the subject of love and being a mature believer. And I knew it's a couple of months ago, I think I was going to be doing this, and that's the subject that just really came into my heart and said, you need to teach on this. And I knew, okay, I'm on the right track. So some of this stuff I actually had before pastors did it, and I was excited about it. And other stuff, I was like, I'm going to borrow that. <laughs> so I did, because no, there's nothing wrong with repeating things, right? So um, there are also other types of love which have been covered here, and I'm not going to really go over all of them in great detail, but um, the Greek word eros, E-R-O-S, and that's the love that's shared between a husband and a wife. Uh, you also have the word, Greek word storge, S-T-O-R-G-E, and that's the love that you would find when you would share that between a mother and daughter, a father and son, or just if you really want to add any kind of uh, family co connection that you can put together, you know, uncles, nephews, you know, father, daughters, <clears throat> ladies, mother, sons. That, that's the kind of love that we're talking about. It goes into all combinations of family member. But what I want to get into tonight is I want to give you what the real Bible definition of love is. If you would, please turn with me to the uh, book of 1 John. First John, and we're going to go to chapter 4, and we will start in verse 7. It said, Beloved, so we're, we're right here at Beloved. John's talking to us as believers. Beloved, let us want, love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and he knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth God. So he that loveth not, excuse me, he that loved me not, not knows God. Boy, that kind of just throws that tongue for a twister. Now, let me do this in my English. He that loves not knows not God. And then right here we have four words. For God is love. God is love. Say that with me. God is love. Now, I could go for the record tonight and just simply call it a night right there. <laughs> Simple and easy. Let me define what love is. But I, I think there's a little bit more that we could get into. So, and I don't know if that would be a record, but it'd be close. <clears throat> when you hear you say the words God and love and it's coming through your heart, your entire life can be changed. It will affect everything that you do in your life. Um, the words, God is love, is very simple and to the point, basically like my preaching. But it just, there's so much more to those words that we can get into. Um, the Greek word for love in relationship to the kind of love that God gives to us is agape. This love is the greatest and the highest form of love because it comes from the Most High, God himself. This love is the greatest and highest form of love because it comes from the Most High, God himself. I want to show you an example of how the Bible defines love characteristics as well. So if you would, with that, let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, please. made this it's a common mistake of stopping in 2 Corinthians. So we're going to 13. We are working our way there. We're going to start in verse 1. 
Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am becoming a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. As we've heard that before, that's an example of just being a nuisance or annoying. Okay? And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and have uh, all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Charity, uh, in my uh, column, center column reference, is also the word love. Okay? And we will define that here in a little bit in more uh, detail. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profits me none. Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It is not puffed up. Doth not have itself unseemingly. Charity seeketh not her own. Charity is not easily provoked. Charity thinks no evil. Charity rejoices not in iniquity, but charity rejoices in the truth. Charity beareth all things. Charity believeth all things. Charity hopeth all things. Charity endureth all things. Charity never fails. Turn the page. So as we read this, we can see that the King James Version uses the word charity. But what I would like to do is look at this in the New King James Version. So, Brother Buzz, if you could flip that over and start back in verse 4 for me, please, sir. Okay. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Love is not puffed up. Next verse. Love does not behave rudely. Love does not seek its own. Love is not provoked. Love thinks no evil. Love does not rejoice in iniquity, but love rejoices in truth. Love bears all things. Love believes all things. Love hopes all things. Love endures all things. Love never fails. So love never fails. Sunday night, Pastor Michelle was here, and she shared with us about a conversation she had with Sister Pat Harrison the last time that she was at the Little Rock uh, campus. And they were talking about the love of God and growing in the love of God. And Sister Harrison said that the Lord dealt with her for months and months on this topic and that she was to speak these verses putting her name in the place of love or in place of charity. So she did that. And this is something that we could all do as well. So let's go back to verse 4 again and try it again. Whenever you see the word charity or love, insert your name. So we're in the King James on this. That's good. So, Dave suffers long and is, ki- is kind. Now, as we read through this, if you feel a gut punch, I understand, because there's a few of them that hit me while I was typing this out as well. So, it's all for all good. It's all for us to be good. Dave does not envy. Dave does not parade himself. Dave is not puffed up or to get a big head about yourself, about what you do or your skills or who you are, okay? Dave does not behave rudely. Dave does not seek his own. Dave is not provoked. Dave thinks no evil. Dave does not rejoice in iniquity, but Dave rejoices in the truth. Dave bears all things. Dave believes all things. Dave hopes all things. Dave endures all things. Dave never fails. Wow. Again, I read through that, and even when I was reading through that, the gut punch came back. I was like, oh, there's a couple of those I've got to work on. And I'm sure, I'm not speaking for everybody in the room, but there might have been a gut punch for somebody else. And we all need to work on something. If that's the case, hey, great. That's between you and God. We don't need to know. 
You don't have to share with us on that. But what I want to do is I want to get a true understanding and a real revelation of what hit me when I went through these verses. Go back to verse 4 again with me, please, in the New King James Version. And when we look at the New King James, it puts the word charity and love. There we go, love. So, every time we see the word love, I want you to put the word or the name of God in its place. So, let's look at that this way. God suffers long and is kind. Okay, let's stop right there. God is kind. So, this is a perfect opportunity for anybody that tries to say, God put this on me. God's doing this. God gave me this sickness. No, wait a minute. That's evil. This says God is kind. Amen. Right? So right there, if anybody that you know or don't even know was speaking about that, you could tell them and says, no, the Bible tells us that God is kind. All right? God does not envy. God does not parade himself. God is not puffed up. God does not behave rudely. He's not going to sit there and butt into your conversations about what's going on. He wants to not be rude. He wants you to seek him. Again, right here, God does not seek its own. He's not seeking glory for himself. He wants you to give him glory. Okay? God is not provoked. God thinks no evil. God does not rejoice in iniquity. But God rejoices in the truth. And we know that the word is truth, right? Because that's what the word has told us. God bears all things. When God bears all things, all you have to do, all the cares that you have, all the worries that you have, the word has told us, give it to him and he'll take care of things. So God does bear all things. So we shouldn't have a worry. We shouldn't have to care about anything because the word tells us God will bear it for us. God believes all things. Everything God has ever said has come true. It has come to pass. And everything in this Bible is true. And God is the author of that. It comes from God himself. So as you're reading through this, Hopefully this will help if you didn't understand it before, which I think everyone does. But this is all true. And you can put this to work in your lives. God endures all things. God never fails. So, when you read a verse, if you'd leave that one up there for me just for a moment, Brother Buzz. Emphasize each word at a different time when you read your Bible. And you're breaking down scripture and you're trying to study things. So if we look at that, replacing God with love in that. So God never fails. God never fails. God never fails. It helps break it down. And it helps you to really understand and highlight what this sentence is doing. It's a three-word sentence, and it's very simple, but it's so profound. God never fails. Say that with me. God never fails. Now, I'd like to go back to 1 John, and we'll pick up where we left off. Yes, sir, King James. Perfect. Thank you, sir. Okay, so we left off at the end of verse 8 where God is love. Um, verse 9. In this was manifest. So in this, it's talking about God's love. Okay, God is love. In this was manifested the love of God towards us because 
that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Now, before we move on, we can go back to John 3, 16 there. So, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So, a demonstration of love is giving. All right, and we kind of talked about that just a little bit in the tithe, but giving is an opportunity to show love. To me, this is the, the best example that I've ever seen of love, a demonstration of love. is God gave his only begotten son, his only son. And the main purpose behind that was love. And that's, I think, me personally, the second reason behind that is so that he could get us to love him back and then share his love. Okay? This is the greatest act of love. Now we're going to continue with verse 10. Herein is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation of our sins. That word, my mouth is a little dry, excuse me. Propitiation means God is satisfied. So God is satisfied for what Jesus did for our sins. So that's what he's referring to. So when he sent Jesus and Jesus satisfied God for what he went through for us, for each and every single person in this room, each and every single person online, what Jesus went through satisfied God. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. So here is another example about we should be loving one another, that it won't stop. We've got to continue growing and growing in love. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us, because he has given us his, kind, or his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the one to be the Savior of the world. That's an instruction. We have seen and do testify. So that is the instruction right there. Testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God will dwell in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God, again, here's three words. There's the definition one more time. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. As he is, so are we in this world. We are a representation of Jesus in this world to others. We have the opportunity to shine bright for others. And then they could approach us and wonder, why, why are you like this? What, what, what's changed in you? And you have that opportunity to share with them that. Now, when we looked earlier in 1 Corinthians, this wasn't part of the definition, but here is another one that describes love. There is no fear in love, verse 18. There is no fear in love. So anything that might bring on an uneasiness, make you scared, worried, there is no fear in love. Well, replace love again with God. There is no fear in God. And if there's no fear in God, there should be no fear in us because who's in us? God. God. But perfect love will cast out all fear because fear hath torment. Again, you could use this as a representation for people that are saying that God's doing this to me or this was an act of God. Or No, it's not. An act of God would be someone showing love or him showing love to somebody. You know, if you, you know, we live in a state which is just great for weather. It could have tornadoes at noon and we got a winter blizzard by three. You know, so... People might, you know, categorize, oh, the act of God's that happened. No, that's not the act of God's. That's an evil work working around us, trying to destroy us. 
acts of love would be an act of God. I wish they would figure out how to change that. That might be my next mission. <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> verse 19. We love him because he first loved us. He first loved us. So when you look back, actually, I'm not done reading. We're going to continue to verse 20. I've, I, I, my page stopped. I apologize. So verse 20. If a man says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. That's a bold statement, but it's so true. If you say that you love God but, but hate somebody, you're not, you don't love God either. Because you, to know God and to love God is to share the love of God. So if you are hating somebody, you don't have the opportunity to, to say that you love God. Um, for he that loveth not his brother whom he can see, how can you love God who have you not seen? And this is the commandment we have from him, that who loveth God love his brother also. So going back and, and referring to Pastor Michelle on Sunday night about how we got to continue working on this love walk, that sums it up right there. Because if we love God and we know God is in our hearts and we're going to be with God, well, we're going to have to love our brother and sister also when we're here and when we get there. So there's not going to be any running. There's going to be a lot of hugging. All right? And a lot of loving. That was free. I have one more scripture I want to read with you tonight. And I want to show you without any doubt what God is. Um, we're going to go back to 1 Corinthians 13. And uh, I think I might have skipped myself here. Let me double check myself, please. I'm kind of hoping I didn't double type something. Nope. We're right. Okay. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 13. And when we look at verse 8 one more time, charity never fails. Replacing charity with the word love. Love never fails. Okay, let's replace love. God never fails. All right? I think we got that one right. Correct? Okay. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For what we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. So, reading between the lines, prophecy and speaking in tongues, all these other things, when perfect has come, when Jesus comes, that'll all be gone. It'll just be him. And we'll be looking towards perfection. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I don't think I've ever used the word spake out loud. <laughs> Even reading this, I was like, okay, excuse me. I, I apologize for that. But that's what it reads in here, so it's true. I understood as a child. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass, darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then I shall know every, or even as I know I am known. And this is what I wanted to get to. Chapter, or, uh, verse 13. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. So let's look at that different. But we're going to replace charity with love. And now, abide of faith, hope, love. These three, or if I do it right in sign language, these three, the greatest of these is love. One more time, let's look at that, replacing the word love with God. And now, abide faith, hope, God, these three, but the greatest of these is God. 
God is the greatest. He is an example for us to live by. And he is a person that we can go to at any time that we need to. He is always going to be there for us. So in conclusion for this evening, I've hoped I've helped somebody. I've hoped I've helped myself, which I did. There's three main points that I want you to take with you tonight. If out of all of me talking, three points. Number one, and I want you to say these with me afterwards. So number one, God is love. Let me try that again. God is love. love. I like that. Number two, God never fails. God never fails. Number three, God is the greatest. God is the greatest. All right. Hallelujah. Well, I thank you for this opportunity to speak with you guys tonight and to teach. Hopefully that's something that you were able to learn from. I enjoyed every bit of it. Um, Am I correct that you are up on Sunday morning, Pastor Brother Jim? All right, so be prepared. I know Brother Jim's going to have a great message for us Sunday morning, and we are going to hear great things from the Word of God. So if you all will stand with me tonight, we will say our vision. Wait for the vision. We're waiting for the vision. I must not say it with me. Here we go. The vision of our church will always be to build people's faith and frame their world by the word of God. And you and I will always be world changers. God bless you. Have a good evening. Thank you for joining us for this message. We would love to hear from you. If you have a prayer request or want to share how this message has helped you, send us an email at main at buildfaith.net. This message and many more materials are available to you free of charge, can be found at buildfaith.net or at any of our location media stores. As always, keep the switch of faith turned on and build your faith and frame your world by the Word of God.